Welcome, everyone. This is a special day. This is a joyous day here at Bedford United Church. Um, we have uh, David Hart back with us for uh, about six months. Yeah. And uh, I'm Terry Choice. I'm going to be presiding today. And I'd like to welcome each and every one of you who is with us today, including all of you at home. It's really great that you've uh, tuned in. And um, I'd like to welcome our, our guest from Al Razul and to say a blessed Ramadan to all of our Muslim friends here and globally. <clears throat> We're going to start off today with um, Amy and Georgie are going to be lighting the candles. And on um, Thursday, I was really, really happy to be a part of an art day that we had for the children. And Amy was also an assistant. And it was all possible thanks to to Drew, Drew, stand up. I know you're, oh, there he is, down there. He's not going to stand up. <laughs> but anyway, Drew, Drew made it all possible. We had 21 children, and it was absolutely a delightful day. Wasn't it, Georgie? It was fun. It was fun. <clears throat> God is here? All the time. All are welcome. All the time. Good girl. Aha. Uh -huh. And Georgie and Amy are looking to move to Bedford. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <clears throat> Let us acknowledge that we are meeting here in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral unceded lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The peace and friendship treaties signed in this territory many years ago still govern this land and remind us that we are all treaty people. We are committed to collaboratively moving towards truth, reconciliation, and equity not only for the indigenous people, but, for, but also for the black and other communities of color and marginalized group with whom we share this land. Together, we can care for and protect this beautiful land and all the people on it. Our opening music is with Tony and uh, Julie McCaddy. And uh, Tony's mother's here, went away, yay, all the way from Newfoundland. And she's always a sparkle. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Please rise as you're able. We're going to sing together, and on this path, feel free to clap your hands. And on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide and on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide, open wide, open wide, open wide. The gates are open wide and on this path. And on this path. Gates of holiness are open wide on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide, open wide, open wide, open wide. The gates are open wide. So enter in. Gates of 
Thank you, uh, Tony and Julie. That was beautiful. I'd like to invite the children forward, and uh, David and Paige are going to uh, lead us today in some youthful inspiration. The children like to come forward. Good morning. I'm looking for a few helpers that might want to help Lauren bring up our red wagon this morning. We're going to bless our red wagon during our time together. If you'd like to join us in Sunday school, you can come up to the front. I see Sky coming up. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> come on, boys and girls. Let's, let's all come on amongst up. Amongst these flowers. I'm really excited <laughs> to have all of you. Good morning. It is great to see you. I just wanted to start with a quick echo of Terry's thanks to Drew Stewart. We might have some photos uh, from our PD Day camp uh, up here, but we have a few kids that were here. We have Sky and Emma was here and Georgie was here. And we couldn't have done this PD Day camp that was all about art. We had hired an artist to come in and teach us how to do felting. We couldn't have done any of that without uh, Drew Stewart's generous donation. And this was in honor of Chris Stewart, who we know loved art and loved uh, seeing children uh, participate in art. So there are some photos uh, with Drew. So I just want to say a big thank you to Drew on behalf of all uh, the children here at BUC for supporting this fun day that we had. So thank you, Drew. <laughs> And I want to introduce uh, Reverend David Hart here, who I think for a lot of us here on the steps is a new face, uh, but we're really grateful to have uh, Reverend David here as our supply lead minister for the next few months. And he's going to share a li little introduction to us and uh, a little bit more about himself. So I'll pass that over to you, David. <clears throat> so, boys and girls, it's great to see all of you this morning. Thank you for being here. And it makes me feel really special because it's my first day back, so thank you so much. I want to tell you a little bit about myself, okay? Um, once upon a time, a long, long time ago, I used to be a minister at this church, okay? But something happened over those years, and I got old. I got old. Now, I know that kids, with your parents and your grandparents sometimes, it's, it's really hard for you to imagine or think that an old person was once a kid like you. But I was. I was once a kid just like all of you. It's true. And I had a whole bunch of pictures to show to everybody to prove it. Um, but they didn't get into the slide deck for some reason. But I got them here. So I want you all to come around, come, come on up around here, and we're gonna, I'm going to prove to you, just in case you don't believe me now that I am old, that I was once just as little and young as all of you. So can you all see? I want, I want you to see, okay? So, so we're gonna, you have to look at these pictures, okay? Okay. Someone you know. You see that? Who is, that's a baby. Who do you think that is? Is that me? It doesn't look like me. That's when I was a lot younger. A lot younger, right? That's when I was a lot younger. Well, <laughs> thank you for that, Terry. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. So now, which one of those? That's that's my mom and dad, and. And who, who do you think I am in this? Which one do you think is me? No, that's not me. That's not me. Take another guess. No, that's not me either. <laughs> that's right. I'm the little guy right in the middle. And that was my mommy, right? I, was, I think I was two or three at that, when I was that age. So, you see, I, it proves I was a kid. Now, look at this one. <laughs> what do you think about that? What do you think about that? Oh, I'd love to show these to you, but to... <laughs> they get funnier. Okay, now look at this. Now look at this one. Who do you think that is? Is that me? But he had hair. 
He had hair. You can see he had hair. Why else? Do you really think that's me? It's good. Ah, I don't believe it. Oh, now look at that guy. Now, that's who I was when I first came to the church here to be the minister many, many, many years ago. And that's that thing. That's what I looked like when I came here a long time ago. Now, when I was here in these early days, we used to have a lot of fun. And I'm going to show you some of the fun pictures that we had. Here, I'll show you. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. See that? I don't know why that. Look at that guy. Who is that guy? Is that me? Yeah. I look like a... Yeah. And then, that's me too. All right. Okay. And then that's me. And then, that last one, that's me when I left here six years ago. Okay? So, <clears throat> so boys and girls, I don't know what happened, but over the years, this little baby, this little kid, grew up, and then he got old. I got old. And so, the church has asked me to come back and to help out a little bit right now, but you know what? When, when you get old, everything becomes a little bit harder, okay? So my body doesn't work quite the way it used to when I was your ages, when I was young. I can't run as fast. I can't lift as much stuff any longer. I get out of breath faster. And you know what's even worse? What's even worse is that your brain doesn't work quite as well when you get old either. It's a funny thing. Like, so sometimes my brain just isn't as fast as it used to be. Like, I go, da, 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 da. And now my brain is going, do, 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 do. <laughs> and, and you know, another thing about getting old is that sometimes my, my honey, my wife, Danielle, she tells me sometimes, because I've lived a long time, sometimes you do things that are really goofy. You get goofy habits. Like, sometimes when I'm talking, I'll be scratching my head or, or I might be sticking my finger in my ear. And all sorts of the goofy things that sometimes happen when you get old too. But, do you know what? There's something about getting old that's very similar to being a little kid. And it's really, really special. The thing I've noticed about getting, let me tell you, when I was a kid your age, I don't know if any of you have done this, I used to go out into the backyard behind my house in the summertime, and my mom would put up a little tent, and I'd ask my mom if I could sleep outside behind the house in the summer. And sometimes I'd sleep in the tent, and sometimes I wouldn't. I'd just lie down on the ground, and I'd do this, right? I'd be sleeping on the ground, I'd be lying down just like this, and I'd be looking up at the night sky. And when I was looking up at the night sky like this, I would feel God. I could feel God. Now, you know, God, sometimes kids think God is like a person up in the sky, but that's not it at all. God is like this mysterious energy and power and spirit, we call it. And love. And when I would stare into the night sky as a little kid, I could sense, like I could feel that power and mystery all around me. The interesting thing about God is even though God's not a person, you can talk to this energy and this mystery and this spirit. And I used to do that. And you know what? The thing about getting old, what I'm experiencing now, is just like when I was a little kid, I'm feeling God once again. I feel like when I breathe, it's like I'm breathing in God. And when I'm sitting still and I just feel my body, it's like I can feel the energy of God in my body. And when I'm really, really quiet, the mystery just overwhelms me. And I feel this sense of God's presence. And you know, that makes up for not being able to lift weights. 
That makes up for my brain not working as fast or being goofy sometimes. That feeling of God is really, really special. And that makes getting old really good. Makes getting old really good. And so now the church has asked me to come and help out a little bit again while they need a little bit of help. And so I'm here to, to help out a little bit. And, um, and one of the things about I know about God is that that's what God wants us to do is whenever there's a hand, whenever we need somebody needs help, it's our job to do what? To help out, right? Exactly. It's our job to help out when people need help, when people need to be loved, to share love with people. And so that's what, that's what I'm doing here, and, and that's what we're all going to, to do together over the next time, too, okay? So, so getting old and being back is, is kind of special, and it's kind of fun. Now I'm going to ask all of you to come up and stand around this wagon with me, okay? And we're all going to put our hands on this wagon, Okay? And this wagon is one of the ways in which we show love, right? This is, this is what God is all about. God wants us to show love, right? And to help people and to care for people. And that's what this wagon is all about. So you know what I'm going to ask you to? I'm going to ask you all to take a deep, deep breath, okay? And as you breathe in, just imagine that you are breathing God in on your breath. And let's be real quiet for a second. Just be aware that the power of God is all around us. So I'm going to ask you now to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for you, for giving us life, for being with us in our lives. And thank you for the opportunity To share your love with other people. May the love in this wagon help all sorts of people who need that love. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thanks so very much for being here with me on this Sunday. It's kind of a special Sunday for me. And yeah. <laughs> I think I was the one to baptize you, Georgie. Exactly. So some of you know me exactly right. And boys and girls, here's the thing. So over the next months, if you want to talk about God, I'm here. If you have any questions, you just come to me and we'll talk about God and we'll figure out how to show God's love more in the world. Okay? All right. Off you go. Great to have you. Do you think the eclipse heralds a time of great new prosperity and wonderful change for the world, or do you think the eclipse is a forerunner of the end of the world? <laughs> Maybe, both. Maybe both. There you go, right? There you go. Well, I thought this morning, as a, and part of the reason why I'm back, right, is to help out a little bit while we're in this midst of looking for a new lead minister, and, and, uh, and some of, there's been so much change going on in the world, and here this morning, I thought, you know what we need? We just need an injection of peace this morning. We need an injection of peace. And I'm going to invite you to share a little peace with one another, but I'm, I'm going to um, ask Terry to come down here, and I just want to model something with you initially, and then I'm going to have you do this with one another, okay? So I'm going to invite you, when the time comes, just to place your hands on your heart. Because peace comes from the heart, not from the head. The head generates all sorts of good things, but it also generates confusion. It generates meanness. It generates despair. But peace is always contained was placed there by the source of the universe. Peace is contained within our very hearts. So we're going to place our hands on our hearts. And then I'm going to invite you to, to look into each other's eyes. And it doesn't work. I always say this to couples when we get married. 
This doesn't work if you're not in each other's eyes, right? <laughs> so you're going to look in each other's eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Breathe deeply. And then there's this wonderful word in our Hebrew tradition, which is shalom. And shalom means peace. And shalom alechem means peace be with you. And shalom in the Hebrew comes from the same root language as Arabic, right? And Aramaic, which Jesus spoke. So salam, aleikum, is also simply a version of shalom, okay? So you can say salam aleikum, honoring our dear friends and neighbors from Al Rasul this morning, or you can say shalom. But as you look into each other's eyes, say, I'm going to say, Shalom, Terry. Peace be with you. And Terry responds with, Shalom, David. Peace be with you. No. no? Terry responds <laughs> in, <laughs> this is not rehearsed. And, and, Terry, <laughs> and Terry responds, and also with you. Oh, okay. I can do that. <laughs> and then we flip it. And then oh. Terry says to me, Shalom, David, peace be with you, and I say, and also with you. So let's okay, do it. Okay, okay. Terry, shalom, peace be with you. And also with you. And David, shalom, peace be with you. And also with you. Right. And now I'm going to invite you to stand up and do that with two or three people around you, okay? And as you do it, try to really feel that sense of peace that you're okay. generating with one another, okay? <coughs> this feels a bit like old home week actually and seeing a whole some of you I haven't seen in a while and Len and Gloria Churchill are back give them a big hug great to have them back as well yeah lovely to see you both <coughs> I hope you brought some sunshine back from Costa Rica for us <laughs> next week <laughs> So it was six years ago when I retired from having been with you for 25 years before that. And it's uh, just sometimes I shake my head and I wonder, first of all, where did the time go? And I also shake my head thinking about all the change that has transpired in the world over that time period. We've gone through COVID, the war in Ukraine started, now this awful circumstance in Gaza and in Israel. Other things going on too. The nuclear agreements and accords 
that have governed the world up till now are all falling apart. Climate change is just proceeding, getting worse. He who shall not be mentioned or named is still causing chaos and craziness <laughs> <coughs> south of the border. <sighs> and on top of that, I'm going to be talking about this in a few weeks. We're dealing with a huge new kind of existential threat that could be facing the world. That's AI, artificial intelligence. And that's going to have a huge impact on culture and society at large. So with all this change going on and all this crisis and all this struggle that's been going on in the world, the church has not been immune, cannot be immune. We're affected. We're part of the culture. We're affected by what goes on in the world around us. And COVID actually forced us to shut our doors for a period of time. People got out of the habit of going to church. Church attendance just kind of diminished, put all sorts of struggles on finances and everything else. But And the whole kind of value of church and the uh, the special role that church was playing in people's lives has kind of diminished over that time as well. And people start to get out of the habit. You all know it. And that not only affected people coming to church, but it also affected leadership in the church. I think uh, a lot of people who were in ministry and in leadership over those years sort of came to this kind of understand, I don't know if there's a future for church any longer. And some of them have, you know, decided to, to leave ministry altogether because, ah, don't know. Don't know if I'm going to have a job down the road, right? So there's all this stuff that's been going on and has arisen in the last six years while I've been away. And I was thinking, man, what am I going to say to, to you folks this morning in the midst of this kind of context and situation? Well, here's what I want to say to you. I still have hope. Okay? I still have hope. I still have hope for church. I have hope for our culture. I have hope for our world. I have hope for all of us. And that Hope, though, is rooted in a core message of the Christian faith that's also rooted in a core sense of the presence of God, which we all need to cultivate more deeply in our lives if we're going to be agents of hope in the world. So I was thinking about how am I, how am I going to articulate all this this morning? And this past week, Jen Hollett, who is a longtime friend, a member of the congregation, she had posted a, um, a video, a musical video, and you all know I love music. She had posted a music video on, uh, on Facebook, and Danielle actually showed it to me, and it's, it's this kind of, this quirky couple out of the U.S. They're called the Banksons. And I don't know, some of, have any of you heard of them? Yeah, so it's the Banksons, they're kind of an indie roots kind of, they're not wealthy or famous or anything like that. They're just this, this couple who obviously likes to do music. And, and Danielle showed me this one vi video, and I started uh, looking at some of their other stuff. And, I, and although they're quirky, but I like what they're doing, and I, I like the messaging that they're given. And then I looked at this one particular video, and I said, hot dog! That's, that's absolutely core to what I want to talk about with you this morning. Danielle? Can you pull that up? Danielle, this is her first Sunday on tech, audiovisual. So give her a big hand, too. And, and we got a whole bunch of them. Peyton is back there, too. We got a whole new crew. But anyway, so, so, oh, turn it up. Volume. We need volume. Turn this up.
Well, getting hot is a sane reaction, but one in need of action because your spirit needs protection. So hey, gather up your sinew and gather up your affection. Hey, hope is not a feeling. Hope is an action. Hey, hope comes from the place where the hurt comes. Let it play, Danielle. I like the ending. <laughs> the Bankson. We'll put, we'll put the link on the website. Beautiful music. All their stuff is just wonderful. Hope comes from the place where the hurt comes. That is the essence of the Christian message at Easter. That out of the incredible pain and suffering and the death of Jesus that took place on the cross and, and all of the pain and suffering that surrounded that, that it was out of the midst of that suffering, in the midst of that pain, out of the depths the ground of that pain, that a new life, a new, a resurrected life, new possibilities were born. The disciples, the traditional reading from the Bible for post-Easter Sunday is two of the disciples of Jesus on the road to Emmaus. I'm going to have Tara read that for us right now. That same day, two of Jesus' disciples were making their way to a village called Emmaus, which was, about, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were in a deep depression, discussing the crucifixion of Jesus and all that had happened. Jesus approached and began to walk with them. But in their gloom, they didn't recognize him. Jesus asked, What are you two talking about? Looking sad, one of them asked, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened these past few days? Jesus said to them, what things? They said, about Jesus of Nazareth, a powerful prophet of how our chief priests and leaders delivered him up to be condemned to death. We were hoping that he was the one who would set Israel free. Then Jesus said to them, what little sense you have. He then explained the Hebrew scripture passages that referred to the Messiah, how he would die, but then enter into his glory. By now they were nearing their village, and Jesus appeared to be going further. But they said eagerly, stay with us. It's nearly evening. The day is practically over. After sitting down with them to eat, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, then broke the bread. With that, their eyes were opened. And they recognized Jesus, who immediately vanished from their sight. 
They got up immediately and returned to Jerusalem, where they found the rest of Jesus' disciples, and they spoke with them about their experience. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in their midst once again. Their hearts filled with joy as Jesus said, Shalom, peace be with you all. Thank you, Tara. There is this strange, mysterious correlation in the Christian faith between suffering and pain and hope. Why are those two so linked and combined always? Well, it's it's actually relatively straightforward. You know, when, when life is good, and there have always been times in human history when life is good, when life is good culturally, socially, when life is good individually in your own lives, we become kind of complacent, right? Eh, it's all hunky-dory, I'm just cruising along with life, I'm raising my kids, having my family, everything's good. Got my vacation down to Florida or wherever, getting some sunshine in the winter, everything's good and my job's working all right, everything's fine, everything's hunky-dory and that's all I need to be happy. But then, when the proverbial, you know what, hits the fan, all of a sudden that starts to disintegrate. That whole impression that we had that our happiness is somehow dependent on our circumstances, dependent upon the things that we do with our lives, all of that starts to crumble. And it's when our faces are, are in the, the muck of depression, some kind of physical pain, some kind of illness or sickness or cultural distress, have so much of in the world going on in these day and age. It's, it's when we're down on our knees, so to speak, when we're suffering that we go down on our knees and we say, we need help. We recognize that this place is not where I want to be and there's a yearning of the heart and the soul for the light, for the truth. For peace. And ultimately those things only come from, for want of a better word, we call God. You all know my story. Most of you know my story. You know, things were all good for me in my life too, right? Things were all good. And I thought I was, I thought, you know, I was doing really well. And I actually thought that I had it all together. And then, wham, I go into the doctor and say, I got a hernia, fix that. And the doctor says, that's not a hernia. And that just, (laughs) you've all got your own variation on that story. You know it. And it's not just individuals who have that story variation in their own lives. The culture does, too. It's something about the fabric of life in this universe that suffering is just part of the puzzle. It forces us towards growth. It forces us towards looking away from ourselves to healing, to light, to love, to God. And because that's structured into us, that somehow suffering seems to be the thing that for better, it'd be nice if we didn't require it, but somehow it's, whether we really require it or not, it it works that way, that suffering turns us towards the light. Because that is core to the whole life of Jesus and core to the Christian message, that's also for me a source of great peace. I had a slide. I wanted to show you this slide about peace this morning, but I can, I can read it for you. There's a particular writer who's talking about shalom. 
and hope and peace are connected as well. Um, th so there's, there's this Cornelius Plantinga, he's a writer, and he talks about the word shalom, and it's an interesting word. And this is, this is how he describes shalom. The webbing together of God, humans, and all creation. Shalom is the webbing together of God, humans, and all creation in justice, fulfillment, and delight. That's what the Hebrew prophets called shalom. We call it peace, but it means far more than mere peace or a ceasefire between enemies. In the Bible, shalom means universal flourishing. Think, I, that word flourishing. In the Bible, shalom means universal flourishing, wholeness and delight. A rich state of affairs in which natural needs are satisfied and natural gifts fruitfully employed. A state of affairs that inspires joyful wonder as it emerges from the creator and creatures welcome God into our lives to shine through us in the world. God resides at the very core of us. The whole message of the church and of faith, of all the traditions, is that the only real place where we can find joy and healing and happiness in life is from being centered in that source of life which resides within us and all around us. And when we function out of that place, we're functioning out of shalom. But the same, just like a day after I was thinking about this, there was a sociologist who was um, being interviewed on CBC radio. His name is Corey Keyes, and he just wrote a book. Right? The, the book was titled Languishing, How to Feel Alive Again in a World that Wears Us Down. How many of you feel you've been languishing? How to feel alive again in a world that wears us down. The whole intention of shalom is that we should flourish, not languish. And the interesting thing about Corey Keyes, he talks a lot about mental health issues. That there's, there's all sorts of young people and elderly people and whatnot experiencing severe mental health crises. But he says the whole culture at large in the world today is experiencing a, a kind of a mental health issue. It's, we're all kind of languishing. We're all in this kind of a funk. The world seems to be in such a, a mess and our individual lives have been impacted by all of that. It's all kind of crazy and we're all kind of in this languishing mode. But the hope comes from the place where the hurt comes. Hope comes from the place where the hurt comes. In that state of languishing, in that state of funk and everything else, there's another, there's another word. Jesus used this word. It's, the, it's a word called repentance. But the Greek word is actually better. It's metanoia. And it means a turning around. Repentance is a turning around. When we're down in the muck, as a culture, as a global civilization, and as individuals, the metanoia, the turning around, is a turning of our face from down there up, 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 up. Not that God's up in the sky, but you know what I mean. It says our turning our face towards the divine, towards the sacred source of life. Recognizing its presence everywhere and in everyone. And knowing that because God is still alive. God is still here, even in the midst of the craziness and all the mind-generated nonsense that goes on in the world. God is still alive and here. God can be accessed as a presence within our own personal hearts. And in this place called church. And because God is still here, and God is always turning us towards light and love and truth, there is always the possibility of new seeds coming up, new possibilities in this time. And, and for me, the crazier the world gets, the more challenging our lives get, 
the more it pushes us towards that metanoia, that transformation, that turning around towards God. And that's why I say, even as the world gets crazier and crazier and crazier, we're going to recognize more and more and more we can't get ourselves out of this without relying upon that larger source of life that we call love, that we call God, that we call truth. And when we turn towards it, all sorts of wonderful new possibilities can emerge. I know that from personal experience in my own life. I know that from being a cancer patient myself. I know it from all sorts of times in my life. You will too. And our culture needs to get that message as well. And that's why the church is so important. And that's why all of you need to get back to church more regularly. No more staying at home behind your screens. We want your butts in the pews. Because when I talk about artificial intelligence in a couple of weeks, we are biological creatures. We are not mechanical machines. And there's something that happens in the biology of our interchange. There's this, there's this chemical, emotional thing that goes on that makes the world a difference. Hope comes from the place where the hurt comes. And it will come. That hope will come. And we can access that peace. Shalom, my friends. The spirit in me honors the spirit in you. And all the people said? Amen. Amen. Thank you. In his uh, thought-provoking message today, David said, it is from the depths of our hurt and our pain and struggle that hope emerges. Often that is true, but how does that happen? When I have difficult times and I know that I need to change something in my life, I ask three important questions. What do I love? What are my values? What is my responsibility? When I honestly answer these questions, I usually gain clarity about how I need to think and feel about my situation, and then what actions I should take to make the necessary changes. Without that time of deep reflection, I will probably react to the unpleasant situations that cause them to continue. For positive change to happen, I need time and space to look at my life and to look at this world objectively. Then I can make decisions that can change things for the better. When I honor what I love, live the values that are important to me, and decide what I choose to be responsible for, I gain hope and direction. I can focus on the problem and often find a peaceful and practical solution. Let us pray. Source of love and peace, we are keenly aware that there are situations in the world and in our lives that are difficult and harmful. We also know that we have the ability to make positive, healthy changes that will make life better for everyone. Guide us, Lord, in living shalom. As David said, let us flourish to be filled with wonder and joy and a sense of purpose in life. Let us find inner peace so we can create world peace. We pray with the love of Jesus in our hearts. Amen. So we have a few announcements. Um, our annual meeting is next Sunday, and it's really important that uh, folks are here. Uh, they don't tend to uh, be very long, and um, there's just some important things to be covered. Uh, I'm going to ask um, David and Hassan Raza to come up for a really interesting announcement. Just a note, we 
you got me there? Okay, just a note on next Sunday, we're also going to be having a special guest speaker who is the person in charge of innovation and future directions of the United Church of Canada, and he's going to be speaking, and I'm going to be engaging him in some conversation as well. So that's going to be very, very interesting. So, um, so just want to encourage you around that too. Now, just, um, just to uh, introduce Hassan here for a second, um, you'll have noticed on the announcements this week um, that I encouraged you to watch a film called My Tree. So Alan McDonald over here put me onto, uh, onto this film, which is um, hosted on CBC Gem. And it talks about the whole situation in Gaza from a very, very helpful and useful kind of perspective. Very gentle, uh, loving, wise documentary. And uh, we're going to continue to promote it on the website. We may have an evening at some point in the future to talk about it. But I would really encourage you to watch it because it really gives a lot of perspective. So when Mohammed, our dear friend, uh, Mohammed Kaswini, who is uh, the imam who comes in from Detroit and from Iraq every now and again to help out the folks at Al-Rasul was here not too long ago. I had a lovely visit with him and, and Daryl as well. We had this lovely, lovely get together we always do. And, and then uh, we went uh, to spend some time at Al-Rasul that evening. And, and when Hassan and the folks from Al-Rasul are very dear friends for us. They have been for many years. Hassan, let me give you a hug there, brother. It's, uh, we, uh, we really love each other deeply. And, and, and I became aware that the folks, you folks at Al-Rasul, are engaged in this uh, wonderful ministry to help out on the ground in, in Gaza. So... I thought I'm going to invite Hassan to chat with us a little bit about that this morning, and then I'm going to tell you a way that we can work with our sisters and brothers at Al Rasul to help out in that situation as well. So, Hassan, yeah, wonderful to have you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, David. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Peace and blessing of God be with all of us. Uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, some of you who might be nearer to the congregation. Uh, all this connection of Al Rasul and Bedford United started with this man. So he walked in many years ago and say, "Hey, what's going on? People are gathered here." So, <laughs> right, and then he learned, "Oh, this is another uh, place of worship," and that's how the connection uh, began, and that lasted, and it's continuing till now. And there was another walk this time. So I didn't know that his visit is planned or no. And, you know, these days, it's a month of fasting, Ramadan. And uh, the whole community gets together for a community uh, breakfast in the evening when you break your fast. And there I saw David. And that was the day when we were appealing for uh, raising some funds for uh, children and women in Gaza. And um, we are like more than 10, 15 nations under that roof from different languages, different geographies. None of us is from Palestine. So we don't have any kind of that connection, but we felt uh, the pain, we felt the need. And the folks on that day, they were talking about so many injured children. Many of them, they don't have even any family member survived, sadly, with no shoes on their feet, no roof on their head, no meal to eat, and no medical assistance. And the folks were appealing that based on humanity, we all are brothers and sisters in humanity first. Do we have any relationship somewhere or not? So we should raise some funds. And the appeal was going on. And one of the part of the appeal were they were saying, whatever the modest funds we raise, we should give to an organization which is working really on the ground to cut any admin cost, which is pretty major these days. You go with any funding agencies. And in there, toward the end of uh, that day, then David said, we would love to be part of it. And I'm really thankful that he uh, gave us an opportunity to come and speak to you. When I was, and I am accompanied by uh, my companion, uh, Dr. Hamid uh, Afshari, who is uh, one of the members of the council at Adrasul as well. There were so many things um, I was connecting my mind to. The first piece we sang, 
uh, make me a channel of peace. Then David played, uh, and one sentence which caught my eye, hope is action. I was, then David mentioned this word is a mess. I was thinking, okay, why this word is a mess? Then I remembered all the pro great prophets of God, Jesus struggled his own life, Prophet Muhammad uh, worked hard, peace be on both of them. And I was saying, if you collect many of their teachings, can I put it in one word? And the word came to my mind was equality. All of those things, they really become fruitful if we observe equality. And why this word is a mess? Because somehow as a global community, we do not believe in equality, whatever the reason is. The day we believe a Canadian child, I mean, sovereignty, honor of the life of a Canadian child, of an American child, German child, British child, Australian child, is the same as the sanctity of the life of a child living in Palestine, living in Sudan, living in Afghanistan, living in Syria, living in Iraq, um, living in all the world war zones. So when we have that sense of equality, we would be way better word as we are now. The mess David mentioned would be really, really uh, going towards an end. And that's very wishful thinking, but that's how I look at it, all those things. So pain and hope, they originate from the same thing. And then we learn hope is action. So I mean, just being hopeful, what we would do, but just being hopeful, we can please ourselves. If we want to bring any change around us, we have to put it in action. And this is an opportunity for people in Al Rasul or our brothers and sisters here, where we could be a channel of peace, not a big channel, maybe a little channel, what I call personally from this highway of faith, where we have two mosques and about three or four churches now, starting from there to land. So we could be a little channel. Maybe we give shoes to one injured child, or we give a meal to an injured child without having an admin cost. So I would request you and encourage you that as for instructions uh, you would receive, please donate generously, and we will channel uh, what are the donations we would get from here uh, through the other donations we got from Al Rasul. Thank you very much. God bless you all. So while I've asked Han here, so what we're going to do, what we're going to invite you to do is we'll, we'll put out an announcement on the, on the website with the announcements this week. So if you'd like to make a contribution to, to helping out, and I know many of you will to the situation in Gaza, we'll invite you to make a contribution to Bedford United Church through the BUC Gaza Relief Fund. And then when we collect that, then we can channel those funds to, to Al Rasul. And, and they have their people on the ground that they will work with that. So, so dig deep and be generous because we have this special shared bond, this special shared heritage with that part of the world. Our faith traditions both come from there. And, uh, and it really calls for that action to generate peace. Thank you, Hassan. All the best to you on this new role. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, this Wednesday, quite a few of us are actually going to the Africville Church Museum um, at 2 o'clock, and we're joining a group from Rockingham United. If you'd like to attend, uh, talk to me after, or you can email me, and there's a $7 admission fee. That's, again, Wednesday at 2. Um, we have an announcement about the, the coffee house that's going to be happening. Looks like we've got Claire and Maya coming forward. And uh, I hope Claire's going to be singing at the, at the coffee house because she's got a great voice. And Maya, do you have a talent, darling? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the arts. <laughs> 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 
You're talented in many other ways, I'm sure. Thank you. I'll just ask your mother. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. Mark your calendars for an amazing night of entertainment here at BUC on April 20th at 7 p.m. BUC youth are holding a coffee house fundraiser to get us to St. Catharines, Ontario for rendezvous in July. That's right. And tickets are only $12 per person and kids six and under are free. Plus, your ticket covers not only the amazing entertainment, but light refreshments and incredible homemade desserts. Don't forget, we will also have some snacks on sale, as well as fried pepperoni, which is my favorite. Uh, come buy tickets after church in the porch. You can e-transfer payment as well. We have a great lineup of performers, and we are still recruiting more. Uh, so this is a great time to show your talent, singing, dancing, or any unique ta talent that you have uh, and you want to showcase. Sign up in the porch today as well as next week. And grab your tickets early and get ready for an unforgettable night of community and entertainment. Yeah. Love enthusiasm and talk about enthusiasm. We've got Tara coming up to talk about healing pathways. Okay, I get to be the bearer of more good news. So, Healing Pathway is at Bedford United Church. We've kind of been on the down low radar for the last year. A few of us took some training last January to get our phase one. And we have a healing room up on the third floor here in BUC. And it's literally, we are channels of God's love, God's grace, God's healing energy. We are you know, the United Church of Canada decided, okay, we need to continue on this ministry of Jesus. Jesus was a healer. We all have the ability to be the conduits for God's healing, love, and energy. So it's just all about intention. And it's about putting your channel into channeling that peace, that grace, that love. So you can be part of this. So is, if any of you are in the muck, that could be spiritually, physically, emotionally, any of those things, we have an option here. This is a generous ministry of love. I love being a practitioner of this because it is all about connecting our hearts and it's all about channeling that love for your highest good based on the intention that you would set for the session. So the sessions are about 45 minutes long um, you get to lay quite comfortably on a table with a blankie, just like that, no little pillow. And there's two of us, and we just, we are there for 45 minutes to be all about you, and we channel that love. We are not doing anything ourselves, we're just conduits. It's the, it's the love that gets, and the healing grace that gets put through us, through our hands, into you with your hands on, their hands hovering, you get to choose, you get to chat, you get to do whatever you want in the session, it's all about you. And, um, but it's all very prayerful, prayerful and very intentional. And that energy, we release you into God's continuing care at the end of it, and then you, that energy does whatever that energy is meant to do. And we don't need to know what it's gonna do. It could go to heal the pain in your knee, help with that, it could go to help you emotionally, it could help you on all levels. We just don't know. It's the, it's the magic. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you are interested in a session, you can sign up online. Uh, on the BUC newsletter this week, there's a link on our website under Connect, under Healing Pathway, on the BUC website, where you can sign up for a session and take part in a lovely balancing ministry of healing. So I invite you. And th so this month is Healing Pathway Month. So the next three weeks, someone from our ministry uh, will be doing the Bible reading. And at the end of the month, we'll kind of bookend it with another little promo. But at any moment, you can sign up online and visit the website for more information because there's also a nice video there on that page where it talks a little bit more about the ministry and how it works. So I invite you. Thank you, Tara. And uh, thank each and every one of you for coming out today. Sorry, this is running a little bit late, but it always does with David. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it's worth it, right? <laughs> thanks to uh, all of you at home, um, and uh, thanks to our AV team. Um, wow. You guys rock today. Danielle, very first time. Claire is fairly new. Peyton, uh, I think it's only the second or third time. And we've got Brian back there, uh, head honcho. Um, really, thank you folks for, for being um, here and uh, keeping things running smoothly. And thank you, Julie, and you, Tony, for the, for the great music and for everybody else who made this, this service possible, including um, Jen in the office, like what would we do without Jen? We would fall apart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so what, what's available? Annual reports. Uh, that's, so the annual reports are online and in the back. Bruce is holding them up. Thank you very much, Bruce. So if uh, you need a paper copy, they're back there. Uh, let's see. Oh, I've just got a, a very, very short closing um, words for you. This is from uh, Dan B. Allender. Our willingness to hold dear the moments of shalom prepares us to imagine a new and better day and to move toward that day with passion and purpose. And now, peace be with you. Please rise if you're able. We're going to sing peace be with you as we go this week.